Okay. You, know, you know what that music means? What does that mean? It means it's Zion Williams' 20th Happy birthday! Zion. Happy birthday, Zion! Woo! All right. You know, here's how we're going to celebrate the big fella's day. Start of his rookie season, delayed. He missed the first 44 games of the torn meniscus. Pelicans struggled without him, going 11-27 over that span. But he returned in January. Things immediately turned around in New Orleans. Pelicans 11-9 and in 20 games since his debut. Zion averaging over 23 points per game. And thanks to that turnaround, the Pelicans enter the bubble 10th in the West. Three and a half games behind Ja Morant and the Grizzlies for the final playoff spot. ESPN NBA reporter Brian Windhorst joining us now. Uh, Brian, with arrested Zion leading the way, what are folks around the league saying about the playoff hopes for the New Orleans Pelicans? Well, the table is set here, Jay. Uh, the Pelicans have drawn the easiest schedule, uh, you know, by percentages coming out of the uh, of the shutdown. And Zion has had basically an off season here. His, as you mentioned, his first, you know, most of his rookie season was kind of wrecked by that knee injury and we really didn't see Zion at full power. Now he's healthy and we often see rookies get a big bounce between their first and second year. Well, that's essentially what's happening here. So the table is totally set. The other thing is, look, we're concerned about the virus and three of his teammates have it, but he has been healthy. His other star teammates, Drew Holiday and Brandon Ingram, have been working out and are healthy. And if they can keep that that, that, that the case, they have a great chance of making it to the playoffs. All that is true, but w once you have an injury, folks are always concerned. If you're Alvin Gentry and David Griffin, how, how do you balance your short-term hopes of reaching the postseason with the long-term hopes of, of a healthy Zion Williamson leading a potential title contender? Yeah, it's a great question. First off, we don't know if Alvin Gentry, we still don't know if he's going to be permitted to go to Orlando. He hasn't officially been cleared yet, and that's another hurdle for this team. But Je David Griffin has been clear since day one. The goal for this season is the playoffs, and they're going to be healthy. They, they kept Zion's minutes down. He's averaging less than 30 minutes per game. They only lifted his minute restriction to over 30 minutes right before the shutdown, and I don't think it'll be much higher than that. So they're going to be careful. But David Griffin has never wanted to play long game here. The trade that he made with the Lakers, with Anthony Davis, was aimed at make it, making the team good immediately. When they went out and signed J.J. Redick, it was to make the playoffs. Now, this is a team that has got the, the, the gas pedal down. They want to excel. They want to get into the playoffs and make a run. That's the nature of the way the team's been built. Malika Andrews joins us now from inside the NBA bubble in Orlando. Malika, you've been there since last week. What's it like living inside a bubble? <laughs> yeah, Tony, I mean, I officially got to Orlando on Monday of last week, and I have been in the actual bubble since Thursday. And every day since I've arrived, I have been tested for coronavirus. Um, and since I actually got to the bubble campus on Thursday, the only time I have left my room is when I once a day uh, cross the lobby to go and get tested. Other than that, I really am being confined to my room during this quarantine. They come and deliver my meals at 8 a.m., at noon, and at 6 p.m. Someone knocks on my door to let me know that it's there, and then they step away so that there's no face-to-face -face contact. And really, this is actually very similar to what the players are going to be going through for the first two days that they're there. My quarantine, because I flew commercial, is a little bit longer versus their two days where they need to register to two negative tests, but this green band that I'm wearing today, I will trade that in after my quarantine ends for an aura ring sizing kit, which is what players will also be wearing to just uh, monitor any early symptoms of coronavirus and also a device that beeps if I get within six feet of another person, something that players will also have just to make sure that social distance is maintained. Yeah, between the bracelets, rings and the monitoring, it's gonna be fascinating to see how it all works moving forward. Now, Malika, a story we're following closely. The Bucks shut down their practices after the team received their latest coronavirus test results. Sounds like there's been a setback, but what can you tell us about this? Yeah, Tony, I checked in with a couple of sources with the Bucks, and I was just told that mostly it's the timing that quote unquote stinks for them right now because they aren't expected to reopen their practice facility before they head to Orlando this week. And you remember that Chris Middleton just this past week told us that he hadn't touched a basketball in two or three months. So he was excited to finally be getting those reps under his belt. Dante DiVincenzo said that he's excited to be back in the gym. And even though they're, oh, we're only playing 
individual workouts. They weren't actually able to play any five on five. He was simulating in his mind what it was like to be defended. And now they don't have that same opportunity. And so that is really how the Bucks are viewing this. It's just more of a bummer that again, their on-court workouts will be once again delayed until they get to Orlando and safely clear the protocol. Once again, Malika Andrews bringing us the very latest from the bubble in Orlando as players begin to report tomorrow. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.